Hello and welcome back to the first session of my solo RPG playthrough of Notorious, the sci-fi space bounty hunting uh, RPG game. In session zero, if you haven't seen that one, totally recommend going back to watch that. We created a unique and special nomad for this game, one that doesn't actually belong to the core mechanics of the game. And that is our engineer here, Orin Dusk. He is an unciet many-eyed engineer. Now, as for the Nomad's target here in the dossier, we are looking for a Lektok, an insectoid by the name of Vespa Stingslicer. We are now on our uh, way out as an engineer, oddly enough, for our first bounty hunt. And our target has been located on the planet Storix. And with that, let us get into the game. Orin Dusk is the engineer one of many for the Nomad Guild. Repeatedly, always fixing damaged and destroyed equipment that the other no Nomads bring in when they are completed with their bounties and their hunts. Many times, Orn has gotten into plenty of arguments with the other Nomads, trying to get the other Nomads to not damage their equipment so much, so that way it's easier for Orin Dusk to fix and repair their equipment. Many times the nomads will come in with their gear badly damaged as if it's more of just a tool than an extension of their body. You know, it would be so much easier if you all would just take the time to think about what you're using and what you're doing with this gear. It's not just a tool. It's more of a extension. It's more of who you are as a person. Think about all these bots that I have to fix and all the speeders and all of the, the spaceships. Why can't you all just take the time to think a minute before acting so rash and violently. And sure enough, many of the nomads would argue back with Orin Dusk about not knowing what it's like to be out in the heat of the moment, being in battle, and having to save themselves and save their own lives. Oh, I'm sure it's as difficult and as deadly as it sounds. I've seen plenty of you go out and come back, no problem. Sure, plenty of them also come back in body bags, but... I'm sure I could do just as good as the rest of you. And with that, the other nomads challenge him. And the nomads guild themselves, while confused about why one of their engineers want to go out on a bounty, decides to go ahead and offer this chance to prove themselves to the other nomads. Seeing as though, seeing as though Orin is the argumentative type, they easily give in to his requests to allow him to attempt one of these bounties. And this is where we begin our adventure. Orin has been tasked with collecting the bounty on Vespa Stingslicer in the planet of Storix. Storix is a planet a few clicks away from the Nomad's home base and place of operations. And with that, Orin sets off on their adventure for the first time. Orin Dusk is obviously extremely nervous about setting out for his first mission and going out to collect the first bounty of this Lektok. But nevertheless, Orin Dusk has argued his way into this first task, this first bounty, jumps into a spaceship that has been gifted to him as a trial to see how he does, and sets off for the planet of Storix. Flying to the planet, he quickly finds and lands in a hollowed-out crater that provides shelter from prying eyes, and sets out into the terrain of Storix to find his first destination. Alright, and now that we've set out on our first destination here, we have to find our first exploration. Orin Dusk sets out after landing in this hollowed-out crater and begins to travel to their first destination to try and find some leads to their target. Again, the terrain for Storix is very mountainy, colossal machines all over the place, dark tunnels through these mountains and through the lower sections of the colossal machines, and on top of that there are active volcanoes, stuff that Orin Dust will have to be very aware of and sure of themselves. So, we set off on our exploration to see what happens here. All right, we end up rolling a one on the exploration table. Let's take a look and see what this says. 
There's no sign of your target, but something interrupts your hu hunt. Roll once on the exploration table. We need to roll a 1d6 and go with that for our table. And then also a uh, another d6, I believe, for the events that happen there. So first of all, let's find out what table we're rolling on. A four. Okay, so table number four. This is going to be unique. So we have exploration events number four. We'll go ahead and roll to see what we end up getting there. As you traverse a dense environment, you come across a hidden clearing where an ancient crumbling structure stands. Roll a die. On a one to two, something happens, and on a three to six, something else happens. So let's go ahead and roll this d6 to see what we end up getting here for this trigger. And we end up with a three. You discover a well-preserved room with intricate carvings on the walls. Gain one mo motivation. What forgotten knowledge or prophecy do you cr uh, do the carvings reveal? All right. Thanks to the strange carvings, we end up getting plus one motivation, which will help us in our battles against the leads and targets or any hostiles as well. So we'll keep track of that, and this allows us to re-roll uh, dice against or with our targets here. Okay. So. We couldn't find our target right away based on uh, the environment that we landed on, but we ended up discovering a well-preserved room with intricate carvings on the walls. So let's think about how this plays out for Orin Dusk. Peeking out of the hollowed out crater that Orin Dusk lands in, he makes his way through the massive mountains and finds a colossal machine may be long forgotten on this planet. Oddly enough, as Orin discovers this colossal machine, he goes and explores the interior of it and sees that on the walls of this machine, there are strange pictures and carvings that look almost reminiscent of himself. A ship landing onto the planet, someone coming out and looking for a target. There's an image of the target itself off in the distance, and it seems as though there's a mural of events that lead to Orin finding Vespa. Surprised by these murals, Orin is motivated to continue the exploration to find their target, because they are sure they can do this just like any of the other nomads can, and prove themselves more than just an engineer, but in also the title of a engineer nomad or nomad engineer. Hmm, interesting murals. Surprising to find these here. This does kind of look like me. It's very strange. Nevertheless, I must continue exploring and see what happens next. Leaving this mural behind, Orin Dusk moves on to continue the journey to the next destination. And with that, we do find our first destination here. So let's go ahead and see what we end up encountering. All right, so for our first destination here on Storix, we arrive in a small outpost or enclave run by the challenging faction. Choose one, search for anyone who might know your target to gain one favor or speak with a local who works here, then rest to gain one motivation. Well, I think we already have plus one motivation. We're doing pretty good. We're we're at 50% of how much motivation we can have completely. I think gaining another one favor for for Orin Dusk here will be the best option. So we will go ahead and do the search option for anyone who might know your target to gain one favor. Alright, so first of all, we need to find out what our small outpost is, or enclave, run by the challenging faction here. So we have a bunch of destinations here, and one of them has to be a small outpost. So we'll go ahead and just kind of roll unless any one of these kind of makes sense. Let's see what we get for a roll. Okay, so for our small outpost or enclave run by the challenging faction, we come up to the Gur, the Targ's Spice Mines. So our enclave here or small outpost is Gur, run by the challenging faction. That works out perfectly. So we will go ahead and do a search action. Now that we're searching for someone that knows about the target, let's see what we end up getting. All right, so we have number two here. Nobody's seen your target, but your presence is noted. Gain one notoriety. Who lurks in the shadows, observing your investigation? First of all, 
let's go ahead and add in the favor. So we'll go ahead and click that. And then we also gain one notoriety for searching for the target. Now, who's slinking around in here looking for us? Who spies us? Who knows who? Okay, let's go ahead and roll on the tables here to find out who was watching our engineer here. Okay, so we have a Talok, a reptilian, that is on Storix here. And let's get a name for Talok. Vex Razorclaw was watching us from the shadows. Okay. I searched around and asked everyone here at the at Gur if they had seen my target, if they had seen Vespa. Eyes were shifty, but no one seemed to have seen this person around. I was disappointed to find that no one here could help me locate my target and get me off of this planet faster than I'd like to be here. Unaware to myself, I was being watched from the shadows and may encounter this person later on. But for the time being, unbeknownst to myself, I need to move on from Gur and move on to another destination here on Storix to find out where my lead may be. And I continued and set off from Gur to find Vespa. All right, now that we've completed our first exploration and destination, we need to once again explore and find a destination. We will roll in the exploration chart and see where we end up next. Ah, number five. If your notoriety is three or higher, which is not, we only have one, you encounter a lead. Otherwise, roll once on the exploration events table. Okay, so the exploration events table. Let's go ahead and roll on that. And for our exploration events table, we are rolling on table number six. So let's see what we get for table six here, which is going to be brand new and unique as well. Table number two. As you traverse a barren wasteland, you encounter a nomadic tribe. Choose one. Show respect for their customs and traditions to gain one favor. What sacred ritual or ceremony do you participate in? Challenge their tribe's strongest warrior in combat. Two stars, one heart, to gain one notoriety. What legendary weapon or fighting style does the warrior employ? Well, we are currently at three favor and one notoriety. I don't know if I'm necessarily ready to have Orin Dusk encounter a lead or get more notoriety, so I think going with uh, respecting the customs and favor here will be the best bet. So I'm going to go ahead and take option number one to gain one favor. So we'll come over here and click on the favor. So we are now at four favor, which is going to help us in the future when we have to take these, event, uh, these results here and take half of that. So at the moment, we're getting a plus two on any favors, which will be really handy, especially if we finish this bounty hunt. So the sacred ritual that Orin encounters here with this nomadic tribe on the planet Storix. I'm invited to participate in a sacred ritual known as the Rite of Elemental Harmony. This ritual is performed by the tribe to honor the planet's natural elements and seek their blessings for balance and prosperity. In a planet of so much industry, it's good to see that the tribes here, the nomadic tribe, still seek to keep balance with the natural elements here on the planet. During the Ritual of Harmony, I am led to a sacred grove adorned with vibrant flora and glowing crystals, surprising to see that there is such a place still on this planet. The tribe shaman guides me through each stage of the ritual, emphasizing the importance of connecting with the planet's essence. The ceremony involves various symbolic gestures and chants, representing the four primary elements, earth, air, fire, and water. I'm invited to join in on the rhythmic dance and intricate movements, synchronizing my energy with the elemental forces surrounding me. As odd as this may be for me to dance and join through, it is something important to me, and I feel that I must do this to gain the favor and move on from here. In one part of the ritual, I am presented with a ceremonial artifact, a staff representing the role of me as the engineer. I am asked to infuse the artifact with technical knowledge and innovative spirit, symbolizing the fusion of technology and nature. As the ritual comes to its climax, I and the tribe collectively channel our intentions and aspirations to an, into a communal prayer, expressing gratitude for the planet's resources and seeking harmony between the technological advancements that are brought here and the natural balance that we strive to maintain. Orin completes the ceremony with this nomadic tribe on Storix, a very rare sight to behold, 
and gains the favor not only of the tribe, but maybe of the deeper elemental side of Storix itself. After spending much time conversing with the tribe about what we had just encountered and what has happened, I disembark from them and I continue my exploration to my next destination to try and find Vespa and finish my job here. As Orin Dusk continues the exploration, he arrives at a fortified base or palace run by the controlling faction. Resolve both. 1. Gain one notoriety. If it's four or higher, a hostile guard approaches. Luckily, my notoriety is only a two now with this, so I do not have to worry about engaging a hostile guard. But I also have to roll twice on the destination events table to see what happens, so <laughs> this could be good or bad. So let's go ahead and figure out where we are, uh, what we encounter here, run by the Red Moon faction here. Anything that specifically says Red Moon? We have the Jantus Temple, probably run by the Mystic Order. We have the Hex, the Executive Arena. Zuko, Zuko, the Hive Caverns. Nuka, the Spaceport, or Dusk, the Red Moon Fortress. Well, r right there we have to say that we have encountered the Red Moon Fortress because, well, we are running into the, uh, you know, the main controlling faction here. Now that we've gone ahead and rolled here, we have to roll twice on our destination events. So we will go ahead and roll for our first destination event. And that will end up being a four. So we have to roll on table number four first, and then we will go ahead and do another one here to see what the other event is. Table two. So table four and then table two. We have to deal with both of these here at the uh, Red Moon Fortress. Okay, so for table four, we end up encountering a prominent figure from your past. Whether friend or foe unexpectedly appears in this location. Choose one. Reconnect with the individual and gain one favor. How does their presence bring back memories or affect your current mission? Or comfort the individual and gain one notoriety. What unresolved issues or conflicts resurface during the encounter? With this, I have decided to choose the first one to gain one favor here. So we'll go ahead and add plus one favor. You're bringing us up to five out of six. We will go ahead and talk about what, who we meet. Uh, we end up meeting a friend from Orin Dusk's past. As Orin Dusk arrives at Dusk, the Red Moon Fortress, he unexpectedly finds someone from his past. And to his surprise, it is a friend named Arya Veleth. Arya and Orin once had been close allies and friends, and she shared numerous adventures before parting ways with Orin and the Nomads. Reconnecting with Arya brings back a rush of memories and emotions for Orin. They reminisce about her past exploits, recalling daring escapes, ingenious inventions that Orin supplied, and the deep bond they formed as fellow engineers and agents of the Nomad Guild. The encounter with Arya stirs up a sense of nostalgia and rekindles the camaraderie they once shared. However, as the conversation progresses, Orin discovers that Arya's motivations have changed since they last met. Arya has aligned herself with a faction opposing Orin Dusk's current mission, and that one with the Mystic Order. Arya has become a foe, driven by a different set of beliefs and goals now. This unexpected reunion forces Orin Dusk to confront the stark contrast between their shared past and their divergent paths in the present. The encounter with Arya becomes a poignant reminder of the choices they both made and the different directions their lives have taken. So Orin is able to fondly remember all of the stories that he and Arya shared as he was yet to advance out onto his own mission that he's doing now and begins to reminisce a bit and then, you know, realizes that Arya isn't here for the, the best of intentions. With a bit of an argument here of, you know, how could you do this to us? How could you leave the the Nomad's Guild? Why did you leave in the first place? This is un absurd. Arya can't get an, a word in edgewise as she knows Orin Dusk is of the argumentative type and continues on her way after sharing some time together. All right, now that we have reconnected with a former guild member, we move on to the second event here, 
that happened to be number two on the rolling tables. So let's go ahead and go to, back to our tables here and see what we get for destination event number two. Hmm, number two here. A large group of soldiers from the controlling faction, the Red Moon, obviously makes sense why they're at the fort, are here. There's no way to avoid catching their attention. Roll a die. On a one to four, a number equal to your roll of hostile soldiers appear. Plus one star and plus one hearts. Why have so many soldiers gathered here for uh, right now? Or five to six, your nomad nomad's guild license holds up to inspection. Move along. Why are they checking every person's ID who passes through here? I mean... Why would there be a whole bunch of Red Moon soldiers here in the first place? Well, we're at dusk, the Red Moon Fortress, so that makes kind of sense. In any event, let's see what we end up getting here. Oh, thank goodness, we get a five. So I don't have to worry about fighting anything right now, because we're an engineer. We're not necessarily built for fighting. And, uh, so I kind of, you know, kind of described why, uh, why there's so many... Uh, Red Moon guards checking uh, IDs anyways, but luckily our, our Nomad's guild license holds out anyways. So, uh, after speaking with Arya and I'm on my way out, I encounter a group of Red Moon soldiers here at the fortress. Not surprising to see these soldiers here, but there are more than expected and more that are out and about. Maybe there's been some moves by the Targ cartel here, and there's a bit of an uprising, you know, maybe someone poked the hornet's nest and got the Red Moon faction up and about. In any event, I hand over my guild license, they inspect it, and then tell me to move on very quickly. I don't spend much time here, and I do as they say, and head out for my next exploration to find more information on where my lead is at. Okay. Orin Dusk leaves the Dusk uh, Red Moon Fortress and moves on to the next destination here. So let's go ahead and see where our exploration leads us to. Nor uh, number two. Let's see here. If our notoriety is six or higher, you encounter a lead, which we don't. Otherwise, we roll on the exploration table. So let's go ahead and get our exploration out of the way, and we have to roll on table number four. All right, let's see what we get for exploration number four. Let's see what we get for exploration number three, and that turned out to be number three. You encounter a group of controlling faction soldiers on patrol. Roll a die. One to four, they immediately recognize you as a threat and attack. Why are you a wanted fugitive in the eyes of the controlling faction? Five to six, the soldiers are open to conversation, plus one stars. What secret weaknesses or vulnerabilities of the controlling faction do you exploit to gain their trust? Well, let's see what we end up getting here. Oh, all right, so our luck doesn't hold out and we are immediately attacked. So more than likely, as Orin leaves the uh, the fortress, one of the guards on patrol there rec realizes the mistake they had made and dashes out to confront Orin Dusk uh, to, to grab him and bring him back in as uh, the Red Moon have had issues with the guild and the Nomad Guild here on this planet for a few times here and there. So we immediately go into a battle as they are hostile. Okay, so we are going into an attack. All right, so for attacking, we have our nomad die, which will be the leftmost number, and the challenging die, which will be the rightmost number. Uh, we add in any attack modifiers for our equipment, and challenge dice does the same. So this is pretty easy. We will come back to look at what happens once we win or lose. So. Our guards here have plus two stars and plus one hearts. Now, I have, for my equipment, either plus... I have a base of plus one star and plus one hearts, thanks to my equipment. Now, do I want to fight them with my ranged weapon, which is the energy pistol giving me plus one star or plus two hearts, or do I want to fight them with my high-voltage baton and use plus two stars or plus one hearts? After a bit of deliberating, I decided to use my ranged weapon here. I'm going to use it at plus two hearts. So this will give me a plus one on attacks, but plus three on my defenses. Because of the way I'm shooting with this energy pistol and maybe attacking them to stun them in some way, it's making it harder for them to fight me. We need to roll a 2d6 for our first attack here. And luckily, we only have to fight these guards twice because they have plus one hearts here. So let's see what happens. And on our first roll, we have a three and a six. Let's see how this worked out. Ah, the six is for me. This is perfect. So the six worked out in my favor with my plus one. I end up with a seven for the guards and their plus two, they have a five. So luckily, 
uh, I win on this first attack here with my, my pistol here, and I am able to shoot them in such a way that I knock out one of the guards. For that, the next guard is charging, and you know maybe they maybe the guard himself uh, that's charging me isn't maybe there isn't multiple guards. It's just the one guard, but he's able to fight through this, the the stunning nature of my attack and is progressing to a, a, a charge and attack me once again. So let's see what happens here with another two d six for the attacks. We end up with a three to one. Let's see who got the higher roll. And again, I end up with the higher roll. That gives me a four and a plus two to this will end up with a three for the guard and definitely with two well-placed pistol shots from my gun I'm able to take down this red moon guard that has uh, realized I may have been a fugitive all along or confused me one way or the other I have been able to circumvent the issues here and have put the guard down as I'm able to successfully defeat this guard that uh, attacked me and, and called me a fugitive of their order, I speak with the guard briefly for a moment and re realize that the guard had mistaken me with a case of, well, mistaken identity. Uh, the guards believed I was a fugitive because of a false accusation and misinformation. Maybe someone lurking in the shadows pointed them in the wrong direction here. In any event, I have neutralized the threat by this Red Moon guard. Now I must decide what to do with this guard in the first place. Okay, now that I've been successful, and this is a hostile, I have to choose the fate of this hostile. I can either spare them and gain one favor and completely cap out my favor, bringing me to six, or I can kill them and gain one notoriety. Um, you know, being the first time this is I'm out and about, Orin may still have the uh, naivety to believe in sparing their life, so this Red Moon Guard will be spared, and I'll gain one more favor to completely max me out. And now, from here on out, I will have to go ahead and start gaining some notoriety. So with that, we are completely maxed out on favor. We have six out of six, and that is as high as we can go. So now it's either motivation or notoriety. With that, I finally leave the Dusk Fortress and move on to my next destination. Luckily, this was the only encounter I had during my next travels to location number three. And with that, we find my next destination here. Okay, let's roll on the table. And we arrive, let's see here. You arrive at a small spaceport run by the challenging faction, so the Targ Cartel. Resolve both. Gain one notoriety. If it's five or higher, a hostile guard approaches. Otherwise, roll twice on the destination events table. Okay. Small spaceport. So then, let's look at the destinations here. We only have ah, one spaceport, the Nuka spaceport. I arrive at the spaceport here, which I avoided landing at when I first made my entrance onto Storix. It appears that I am starting to be recognized. As much as I may or may not want to, this will help me find my first lead and finding Vespa. This has been quite the slow-going process, and something that the other nomads seem to maybe casually ignore or fail to tell me as they bring in their equipment to be repaired from their jobs. Alright, our notoriety is now at three. We are 50% of the way to finding our target here. Alright, so with that we have to roll twice on the destination events table. So let's see what our first table will be. Our first table will be a six, and the second table will be a six again. All right, so we can roll on table number six twice here to see what happens. All right, first event will be a renowned scholar or historian resides in this area, holding valuable knowledge. Choose one. Seek the scholar's wisdom and gain one motivation. What historical or academic subject are they an expert in? And how does this knowledge aid your quest? Or disregard the scholar's presence and gain one favor. Why do you believe their knowledge holds no relevance or importance to the mission? Well, this is going to be an, in uh, an easy one for Orin Dusk. We already have our favor capped out, so we're going to go ahead and go and grab the motivation here. So this is going to be really helpful in, you know, dealing with other fights and whatnot, especially when we come across leads and the, uh, the target themselves, finally. We will go ahead and take our plus one motivation. Now we are at four of six, and uh, we will see what 
historical or academic subject they are an expert in and how this helps us on our quest. Orin Dusk arrives at the Nuka spaceport and seeks out a renowned scholar by the name of Dr. Helena Viridian. Dr. Viridian is an expert in ancient mystic artifacts and the history of the mystic order. Her extensive knowledge of the mystic order's practices, rituals, and hidden relics proves invaluable to Orin Dusk's quest to find Vespa Stingslicer, who is wanted by the mystic order. Dr. Viridian reveals that Vespa Stingslicer was once a high-ranking member of the Mystic Order, but she defected and went into hiding. She explains that Vespa possesses vital information about the lost artifact, known as the Scepter of Eternity, a powerful relic that can unlock ancient secrets and reshape the balance of power in the galaxy. With Dr. Viridian's expertise, Orin Dusk learns about the hidden trails and ancient temples that Vespa may have sought refuge in. Dr. Viridian guides him through the intricate history and locations re related to the Mystic Order, deciphering cryptic texts and unraveling en enigmatic symbols that lead them closer to Vespa's whereabouts. Through their combined efforts, Orin Dusk gains insight into the inner workings of the Mystic Order and their pursuit of Vespa. Alright, so that helps out. Orin thanks, Orin Dusk thanks Dr. Viridian many, many times, multiple times for all the help. Uh, as, as argumentative as Oren is, he works with Dr. Viridian, and Dr. Viridian is able to work with Oren's uh, particular quirks and gets past these to move on after that, and maybe pinpointing and getting the motivation to further search for Vespa. Oren leaves Dr. Viridian and moves on to the next encounter here at the spaceport. All right, so this one doesn't exactly work with being in the spaceport, but we can uh, rework number six here. In the depths of a dense jungle, so it will say in the depths of the spaceport here, we encounter a wise and reclusive hermit. Choose one, seek the hermit's guidance and receive valuable advice or a prophecy, gain one motivation, which could be helpful. What significant event or destiny does the hermit reveal to you? Or challenge the hermit to a mental or physical contest. To prove your worth and gain their respect, what s uh, ancient skills or discipline does the Hermit excel in? Well, this one needs to be reworked a little bit because there's no benefit for challenging him. So more than likely, I would say for this part here, we would say plus one favor. We will go for the motivation because <laughs> we don't really need anything else. So we'll go ahead and add in the motivation here. We don't need favor. So our motivation is now up to a five. And once again, we have spoken to a wise person to help us find Vespa Sting Slicer once again. So maybe not necessarily what we were expecting from a spaceport, but we do continue on here. So let us find and see what we encounter with this wise recluse at space, uh, the Nuka spaceport. As Orin Dusk continues his journey, in the leaving Dr. Viridian, he stumbles upon a remote and secluded corner of the Nuka spaceport, where he encounters a wise and reclusive hermit named Elder Kale. The hermit, known for his profound insights and connections to the cosmic energy, senses the weight of Orin Dusk's quest and beckons him closer. With a voice filled with ancient wisdom, Elder Kale reveals a significant event in Orin Dusk's destiny. He explains that the pursuit of Vespa Stingslicer is not merely a matter of capturing a fugitive or fulfilling a mission. Instead, it is a crucial step in a much grander cosmic design. The Hermit reveals that Vespa Stingslicer unknowingly holds the key to unlocking a hidden prophecy that has been foretold for generations. His prophecy speaks of a convergence of forces where the fate of countless worlds hangs in the balance, or in Dusk's quest to apprehend Vespa is intertwined with the destiny of the galaxy itself. Elder Kale explains that by capturing Vespa and unraveling the secrets she holds, Orin Dusk will set in motion a chain of events that will shape the future of the Mystic Order, the balance of power in the galaxy, and ultimately his own path as well. The Hermit assures Orin Dusk that he possesses the strength, determination, and skill to navigate this intricate web of destiny and bring about the resolution that the prophecy demands. Once again, Orin is motivated by this Hermit and is determined to find his target here. This is a good point as any to end our first episode here, session one of the Nomad solo RPG playthrough. We will continue the story of Orin Dusk and his first bounty 
chasing down Vespa Stingslers are here on the planet Storix. Hopefully we will be able to find uh, where the leads are in our next episode and maybe conclude with a battle with the target. But until next time, let us see what happens as the story unfolds. <laughs>